Will all the senators and guests kindly take their seats? The 2017-2018 session of the Rhode Island State Senate is hereby called to order. It is my pleasure to welcome everyone to the chamber this afternoon and wish everyone a happy new year. At this time, I would like to appoint the following committee to escort the Honorable Gina M. Raimondo, Governor, to the rostrum. Would Senators Goodwin, Miller, Felag, Nesselbush, Gallo, and De Palma kindly retreat to the rear of the chamber? Madam Chairwoman, Her Excellency, the Governor of the State of Rhode Island. Will the Senators please attend? to appoint the following committee to escort the Honorable Nellie M. Gorbea, Secretary of State, to the rostrum, with Senators Satchel, Pearson, Kettle, Lombardo, Chacon, and Golden kindly retreat to the rear of the chamber. Secretary of State. Will the Senate please attend? Committee to escort the Honorable Paul A. Sattel, Chief Justice of the Rhode Island Supreme Court, to the rostrum. Senators McCaffrey, Lynch Prada, Lombardi, Archambault, Conley, and Jabor kindly retreat to the rear of the chamber. Chief Justice of the Rhode Island Supreme Court. Will the members please attend? It is my honor and privilege to introduce the Honorable Nellie M. Gorbea, Secretary of State, to certify the role of those duly elected to this chamber and to administer the oath of office. Secretary Gorbea. Okay. Yeah. I. Nellie M. Gorbea, Secretary of State, certify, hereby certify the following list of members elected to the Senate in the General Assembly in accordance with the certificate of election filed in this office by the Board of Elections on the 14th day of December 2016, as provided by Section 22313 of the General Laws of the 1956 Statutes. Mary Ellen Goodwin. Ana B. Quesada, 
Gail L. Golden, Dominic J. Ruggiero, Paul V. Jabor, Harold M. Metz, Frank A. Chacon III, James E. Doyle II, Adam J. Satchel, Walter S. Felag Jr., James Arthur Seveny, Louis P. De Palma, M. Teresa Paiva Weed, Daniel DePont, Donna M. Nesselbush, Elizabeth A. Crowley, Thomas J. Paulino, William J. Conley Jr., Ryan W. Pearson, Roger A. Picard, Nicholas D. Kettle, Stephen R. Archambault, Paul W. Fogarty, Mark A. Cody, Frank Lombardo III, Frank S. Lombardi, Hannah M. Gallo, Joshua Miller, Michael J. McCaffrey, Janine Calkin, Aaron Lynch Prada, Cynthia Armour Coyne, Leonidas P. Reptakis, Elaine J. Morgan, Mark W. G., James C. Sheehan, V. Susan Sosnowski, Dennis L. Algier. Now, if you could please rise and raise your right hand. <laughs> only, the, only the ones on that list. <laughs> You, being chosen to the place of Senator in the General Assembly, do solemnly swear or affirm that you will be true and faithful to this State of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of this State, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of your office to the best of your abilities according to law so help you God. Congratulations. At this time, I would ask that the reading clerk call the roll of the body. The members will please respond by restating present. Senator Algier. Senator Archambault, Senator Calkin, Senator Chacon, Senator Conley, Senator Cody, Senator Coyne, Senator Crowley, Senator DePont, Senator De Palma, Senator Doyle, Senator Felag, Senator Fogarty, Senator Gallo, Senator G, Senator Golden. Senator Goodwin, Senator Jabor, Present. Senator Kettle, Present. Senator Lombardi, Present. Senator Lombardo, Present. Senator Lynch, Present. Senator McCaffrey, Present. Senator Metz, Present. Senator Miller, Present. Senator Morgan, Present. Senator Nesselbush, Present. Senator Piva Weed, Present. Senator Paolino, Present. Senator Pearson, Present. Senator Picard. Present. Senator Casada. Present. Senator Raptakis. Present. Senator Ruggiero. Present. Senator Satchel. Present. Senator Seveny. Present. Senator Sheehan. Present. Senator Sosnowski. Present. Madam Chairwoman, we have a quorum. Thank you. At this time, I am honored to have His Excellency, the Most Reverend Reverend Robert C. Evans, Auxiliary Bishop of Providence, here this afternoon to deliver the invocation. Would the members and guests please stand and remain standing until the colors are retired. Bishop Evans. Let us pray. O oh God, you are our source of wisdom and font of justice. For by your loving plan, the world and all that it contains was created. 
It is fitting then that at the outset of this new session of the Rhode Island State Senate, all turn to you for guidance in studying issues, for impartiality in making decisions, and for courage in enacting laws and statutes that reflect your plan for the good of men and women, for we are all created in your image. Let the light of your divine wisdom direct the deliberations of our General Assembly and shine forth in all the proceedings and laws framed for the progress of our citizens and the good order of society. We pray for the governor of this state, for all the members of the assembly, for all judges, magistrates, and other officers who are appointed to guard our political welfare, that they may be enabled by your powerful protection to discharge the duties of their respective stations with honesty and ability. Finally, we commend to your unbounded mercy all our fellow citizens throughout the state of Rhode Island, that we may be preserved in unity and in that peace which the world cannot give, and after enjoying the blessings of this life, be admitted to those blessings which are eternal. Grant this, we beseech you, O Lord, of mercy and justice, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Now, at this time, I would ask that the Newport Artillery Company please present the colors. on the Dean of the Rhode Island State Senate, Senate Majority Leader Dominic J. Ruggiero, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Leader Ruggiero. Thank you, Madam President. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I would now call on the ensemble from the Newport, Rhode Island, Ancient Order of Hibernians Men's Singing Group to sing the national anthem. Artillery Company of Newport to retire the colors and thank them for their duty to our state and for their gracious assistance with today's special events. Thank you, gentlemen.
Please be seated. At this time, it is my honor and privilege to introduce Her Ex Excellency, the Governor Gina M. Raimondo, for special remarks. Governor Raimondo? Thank you. Thank you, Senate President. Happy New Year. Congratulations to everybody for being reelected and for the four new senators. Uh, welcome aboard and thank you for running and congratulations. Um, I have loved working with you guys. Uh, you have an amazing leader in the Senate President and I, together, we've accomplished a great deal in the past couple of years. Raised the minimum wage, brought about all day kindergarten, tripled the number of pre-K classrooms, welcomed companies like General Electric and Johnson & Johnson to our state, making some breaking ground on the 195 land, putting people back to work, reducing business taxes. In fact, today is the first day that the reduced unemployment insurance tax is going into effect. So because of you and your hard work and your leadership and your collaboration, uh, every small business is going to get a break. Uh, every child has a chance to go to all-day kindergarten. 5,000 students have gotten a Rhode Island Promise Scholarship, which is enabling them to go to CCRI, URI, or RIC. 4,000 students are taking college classes for free while they're in high school. So it's not easy. And for the four new, guy, the four new kids on the block, this is not easy. Um, I, I often joke that my best training for politics was playing rugby in college because you can take a licking and get right back up, but it's worth it because the fact that you're here makes a difference in people's lives and makes Rhode Island better. Uh, so on a very personal level, I want to thank you, each and every one of you, Leader Ruggiero, you know, all, all of you, I can name all of you, the Senate President, every one of you, we have worked together on so many issues these past two years. You've made me a better governor. We've worked together collaboratively to get things done. Uh, I have no doubt in the, the next year we'll have our share of challenges. Um, but let's, let's always keep the people of Rhode Island in our forefront, the reason we're doing this. Uh, we, we always say that. We, go, we, go to, we, we went to uh, an event of the PTEC program. And suddenly, when you're with these young people who are getting their college degree after graduating high school, all the stress of this building melts away, and you remember, this is why we're doing what we're doing. So these young people can have a chance so Rhode Island can be stronger. So here we go, another new session. I'm up for it. I'm looking forward to working with you. We'll have some fun. We'll laugh through it. We'll get good work done for the people of Rhode Island. And uh, just know how much I appreciate you. I love working with you. And when you look all over the country, and there's gridlock in Washington and gridlock in so many states, not here in Rhode Island. And you, senators, should be proud of that. You figure out how to work across the aisle and with the governor to get things done. So thank you for your service. The next order of business is the election of the President of the Senate. The Chair will entertain a motion to open the floor to nominations. Senator Ruggiero. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the floor be opened to not for nominations for the Office of President of the Senate. Is there a second to that motion? Leader Algier. Leader Algier seconds that motion. The motion has been moved and seconded that the floor be open to nominations. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the floor is now open for nominations. The chair recognizes Senator Gallo. Thank you, President. It is my distinct honor to stand before you today to nominate Teresa Parva-Weed for re-election to the Office of President of the Senate. I know of no other leader in this chamber or throughout government who is dedicated or has done as much as she has to improve our state. She doesn't seek accolades, but we in this room know that Teresa is always working tirelessly to nurture our, our ideas and pass initiatives that make our state a better place. From my own perspective, I have seen her leadership make the difference on countless education initiatives, from establishing a funding formula 
and to full day um, universal kindergarten. She persevered on these issues even as obstacles to progress may have seemed insurmountable. She knew how important it was for the state. Each of us who has worked alongside her can tell stories of similar challenges that were overcome because of Teresa's perseverance, her intellect, and her co coalition building skills. She is quick to deflect any kind of praise back to her colleagues, but we know that these accomplishments would not have been possible without her. As the first woman to serve as majority leader and the first woman president of the Senate, Teresa has forged a legacy about which we can all be proud. She is thoughtful and thorough. She represents the Senate with grace and distinction. It can be easy to take a jaded view of elected officials, but, but Teresa belies the negativity. She is a shining example of integrity and dedication to service. Her hard work is motivated by a genuine love of our state and a desire to improve it on behalf of the people that we serve. Teresa always puts the institution of the Senate first. Through her leadership, she has positioned the Senate as a leader on issues important to the citizens of Rhode Island. Issues such as education, of course, but also econ economic development, mental health, addiction and overdose challenges, the environment, justice reform, social services, regulatory reform, and so much more. Her leadership has helped to establish the Senate as a respected source of innovative proposals that improve our state. As I reflect on the Senate, an institution I revere, I am proud that our president also loves the institution and has done so much to build it up. I am proud that our president will always advocate on behalf of us, her colleagues, and for the good of all Rhode Islanders. Working collaboratively with us, she fights tirelessly for our priorities because they are important to our constituents and to the betterment of our state. I know that our president is going to continue to bring people together to work out differences, to solve difficult problems, and to make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, I'm very pleased to nominate my friend M. Teresa Piva Weed for re-election to the office of President of the Senate. Thank you, Senator. At this time, is there a second to that nomination? Recognize Senator McCaffrey. Thank you, Madam President. Governor Raimondo, Your Excellency Bishop Evans, Rabbi Mack, Chief Judge Sutel, Secretary of State and Attorney General, as we come together to commence a new legislative session, we must elect leaders for our chamber. With our new members and our older members who have come back, who have been elected and re-elected, we are fortunate in this body because we are blessed with highly motivated and fine individuals who represent the cities and towns of the state of Rhode Island, and to have as their goal serving the best interest of the people of the state of Rhode Island. The citizens have elected us to do nothing less. Because of the type of people we have in the Senate, I know they want to select the best possible leaders. I have been in the Senate during Teresa's time as the leader, and based on my experience, I can say, Teresa will never get the members in the Senate into trouble with any of her actions. Her positions are well thought out and well studied. Her actions are in the best interest of the people of the state of Rhode Island, and made to make the members of the Senate and the people of the state of Rhode Island look good. As I came to prepare for today, I began to search some historical figures to compare Teresa with. I found that person to be the first female cabinet member appointed by a president. Frances Perkins was appointed by FDR as the Secretary of Labor. She was the Secretary of Labor, not in name only, but in all social legislation to fight the Great Depression came from Frances Perkins. Social Security, National Labor Relations Act, and the 25 cent minimum wage. While, many, while her work may not be known to many today, her work is surely felt by the citizens. Social Security, pensions, and federal minimum, mandated minimum wage. 
It is this link and the first female cabinet member, Teresa Izzar, Frances Perkins. Most of you know I have three daughters, Kaylin, Brenna, and Deirdre. I don't know of any of my daughters who get involved in elective office, but if they do, because of Teresa's accomplishments, my daughters will have smooth sailing. Teresa has proven herself to be the right person to be the President of the Senate, and I am proud to second the nomination of my friend, M. Teresa Pyre as President of the Senate. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator. Are there any additional nominations? Hearing none, the Chair will entertain a motion to close nominations. The Chair recognizes Senator Sisnowski. Madam Chair, I move that the floor be closed to nominations for the Office of the President of the Senate. Thank you, Senator. Is there a second to that motion, Senator Coyne? I second that motion. Thank you, Senator. It has been moved and seconded that the floor be closed to nominations. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The floor is now closed for nominations. I would like to request the reading clerk to call the roll of the body, and the members will respond by stating the name of their nominee. Senator Algier. Senator Algier, pie for weed. Senator Archambault. Senator Archambault, pie for weed. Senator Calkin. Senator Calkin, pie for weed. Senator Chacon. Senator Chacon, pie for weed. Senator Conley. Senator Conley, pie for weed. Senator Cody. Senator Cody, pie for weed. Senator Coyne. Senator Coyne, pie for weed. Senator Crowley. Senator Crowley, pie for weed. Senator DuPont. Senator DuPont, pie for weed. Senator De Palma. Senator De Palma, pie for weed. Senator Doyle. Senator Doyle, pie for weed. Senator Felag. Senator Felag, pie for weed. Senator Fogarty. Senator Fogarty, pie for weed. Senator Gallo. Senator Gallo, pie for weed. Senator G. Senator G, pie for weed. Senator Golden. Senator Golden, pie for weed. Senator Goodwin. Senator Goodwin, pie for weed. Senator Jabor. Senator Jabor, pie for weed. Senator Kettle. Senator Kettle, pie for weed. Senator Lombardi. Senator Lombardi, pie for weed. Senator Lombardo. Senator Lombardo, pie for weed. Senator Lynch Prada. Senator Lynch Prada, pie for weed. Senator McCaffrey. Senator McCaffrey, pie for weed. Senator Metz. Senator Metz, pie for weed. Senator Miller. Senator Miller, pie for weed. Senator Morgan. Senator Morgan, pie for weed. Senator Nesselbush. Senator Nesselbush, pie for weed. Senator Pie for weed. Teresa Pie for weed. <laughs> Senator Pie for weed, pie for weed. Senator Paolino. Senator Paolino, pie for weed. Senator Pearson. Senator Pearson, pie for weed. Senator Picard. Senator Picard, pie for weed. Senator Casada. Senator Casada, pie for weed. Senator Raptakis. Senator Raptakis, pie for weed. Senator Ruggiero. Senator Ruggiero, pie for weed. Senator Satchel. Senator Satchel, pie for weed. Senator Seventy. Senator Seventy, pie for weed. Senator Sheehan. Senator Sheehan, pie for weed. Senator Sosnowski. Senator Sosnowski, pie for weed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. The election is completed, and Teresa Piverweed has been elected president of the Rhode Island Senate.
it's nice and sincere honor at this time to introduce the Honorable Paul A. Sattel, Chief Justice of the Rhode Island Supreme Court, and to invite Nicole, my Nicole, Nicole Beatty, to administer the, the Chief Justice to administer the oath, and Nicole to hold the Bible while that occurs. <laughs> Put your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand, please repeat after me. I am Teresa Piva Weed. I am Teresa Piva Weed. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of the office of the President of the Senate. Discharge the duties of the office of the Presidency of the Senate. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. And that I will support the Constitution and laws of this state. And that I will support the Constitution and laws of this state. And the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The next order of business at this time is for me to give a speech. <laughs> Thought I could skip that part. So first, let me begin by saying thank you, Hannah, and thank you to Michael for your very kind words. And thank you to all the members of the Senate for your support. I am deeply humbled with this honor of serving you as Senate President. I ask you to all join me today in welcoming the statewide general officers that are here to join us. In particular, we have Attorney General Peter Kilmartin, who's here to join us. Welcome, Peter. We look forward to working with the general officers as we confront the challenges of our state. I want to thank uh, Bishop Evans, and I know Rabbi Mack is here for closing, for participating in today's ceremony, and certainly the Newport Artillery, and we'll be hearing again from the Newport Hibernians. Chief Justice Sattel, it was an honor uh, to have you here today to administer the oath of office. Thank you, and welcome to the Senate Chamber. I want to welcome all of your family and friends that have come here today to join us. Your support means so much to us. And the fact of the matter is, we couldn't be here without all of you. But in addition to those that are here today to join us, I want to recognize those that cannot be here today, but may be at home watching us on TV or going to watch us on delayed recording later. And I also want to take a few moments to recognize um, well, I want to thank all of those for their encouragement and their patience. And I also want to take a moment in particular to remember at this time, uh, fondly remember, Senator Goodwin's father, Senator Goodwin, as well as Mayor Doyle, and know that they too are with us in spirit today. I want to say congratulations and welcome back to all of you to the Senate. It's a true privilege to serve alongside such a group of dedicated individuals and pu public servants. We are particularly pleased to welcome our four new members to the Senate, and I'm proud to officially recognize you as senators today. I'm few, sure I'll have a few more opportunities. But Senator Janine Calkin, Senator Thomas Paolino, Senator Anna Casada, and Senator James Seveny, special welcome to, and congratulations today. Today, you and all the members of the Senate take our place as part of this lively experiment that has endured in part because ordinary citizens, like you, have chosen to step forward and to serve our state. I particularly want to thank Dominic Ruggiero, who has been a steady partner as we've worked together to improve our state. Dominic is devoted to the institution of the Senate as well as the success of the members. He is committed to helping his colleagues achieve their goals as well we work together on behalf of our constituents. I'm grateful to be able to serve alongside him as our majority leader and to call him a friend. I also want to take a moment to recognize Dennis Alger, who has led with dignity and distinction. He is a strong voice of the Minority Caucus while working across the aisle to build common ground and achieve progress for our state. Leader Alger and I 
have actually served together as we were incoming members of the class of 1992. And I've been honored to serve alongside of him throughout our time in the Senate. But the elections are behind us now. And regardless of party affiliation or any ideology, I believe that each of us in the Senate share common goals. First and foremost, we want a thriving economy. We want an excellent education system. We want safe roads and safe bridges. We want to ensure our children, our elderly, and our disabled are cared for. These aren't progressive or conservative issues. These aren't Democrat or Republican issues. Rather, these are issues that all Rhode Islanders care about. By working together, we can address the serious challenges that confront our state. Rhode Island has many strengths upon which we can build. We have a great quality of place with arts and culinary scenes that are second to none. We are ideally situated in the Northeast Corridor. We're home to world-class colleges and universities. The natural beauty of our beaches and rural areas are unsurpassed, and the historic charm of our cities are odd. The members of this chamber have worked together with other leaders in state government to reform personal and business taxes and to make the necessary investments in education and in infrastructure that are fueling the state's economic turnaround. Rhode Island is gaining momentum. With committed leadership in the executive branch utilizing the tools approved by this General Assembly, we are attracting investment from world-class companies. As the Governor mentioned, Virgin Pulse, Wexford and the Cambridge Innovation Center, Johnson & Johnson, GE. These global companies could locate offices anywhere in the world, and they have chosen to have a presence in Rhode Island because of the investments that we are making in our state and because of our exceptional quality of place. We are grateful to them and to the thousands of businesses that local businesses that have made Rhode Island their home and are committed to remaining in our state. And we know that challenges remain and the urgency with which we must continue to address our economy has not diminished. But as we build upon the progress that we have made to put Rhode Islanders back to work, there is good reason to embrace the hope that is proclaimed in our state motto. The work of rebuilding our economy extends to the investments we make in public systems. It is wise to invest in effective programs that are bringing about proven results. From education and workforce development, to preventative health care, to rehabilitation services for prisoners. A priority for the Senate this year is an often ignored issue that impacts many of us personally and all of us in our communities. We have focused in past years on addressing the opioid addiction issues. This year, we need to pay attention to mental health issues and their impact on our children, families, schools, public safety, criminal justice, human services, and health care systems. Mental health is critical to physical health and to productivity throughout a person's lifespan. There are proven, effective ways to address the challenges of mental illness. The Senate Health and Human Services Committee has been meeting and conducting a series of hearings over the fall, and they are going to be making recommendations to improve mental health services in Rhode Island. A related important step is enactment of into law of the justice reinvestment reforms passed by this chamber last year. Justice reinvestment saves money through lower incarceration rates, makes communities safer by making offenders less likely to reoffend, and has the potential to transform lives of individuals who need treatment, not incarceration. We're grateful to Justice Sattel and the courts for their work on this important issue, as well as Governor Raimondo for her work and her commitment to these reforms. We also need to improve compensation for direct care workers, including those who serve the developmentally disabled and those who work in home care. Stagnant wages in these industries, even as minimum wage has increased by 30% over the past five years, means workers in these critical fields can move to much less demanding types of work for similar compensation. 
that increases turnover rates and training costs and reduces quality of care for those served by our direct care workers. These essential workers should earn more than minimum wage, and the Senate will be working with Governor Raimondo and our colleagues in the House to increase their compensation. As we embark on this 2017 legislative session, let us work collaboratively with courage and compassion to lead our state into a brighter future. I am very grateful to lead a chamber that is filled with public servants who sincerely desire to improve this state we love for the benefit of all Rhode Islanders. We bring different talents and perspectives, but working together, we will make this state an even greater place to live and work. Welcome back. Thank you, and Happy New Year. This is election of the reading clerk of the Senate. Are there any nominations, Senator Doyle? Madam President, colleagues, I nominate Patel's son, Jonathan S. Baxter. Thank you, Senator. Is there a second to that nomination? The chair recognizes Senator Nesselbush. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I rise to second the nomination of my friend from Pawtucket and uh, the ever competent John Baxter. Thank you, Senator Nesselbush. Are there any additional nominations? Hearing none, the clerk will unlock the machine. Those voting for John S. Baxter as the reading clerk of the Senate will indicate by pressing the green button. Those opposed the red, the clerk will lock the machine and take the tally. Will the clerk please lock the machine? It is my pleasure to announce that John S. Baxter of Pawtucket has been elected the reading clerk of the Senate for the years 2017 and 2018. The Secretary of State is otherwise detained in that other chamber, so we're going to wait, Mr. Clerk, until she returns to swear you in. The next order of business is the election of the President Pro Tem of the Senate. Are there any nominations? Senator Lombardi. Thank you, Madam President. I'm proud to rise in support of Senator Harold Metz, who, in a time where, the, as the governor has stated, the nation is a nation divided, we are concession builders, and perhaps one of the best concession builders is the individual who always takes the spiritual high road and is always the calming force uh, for this body. I am proud to stand in support of the election of President Pro Tem, Senator Harold Metz. Is there a second to that nomination? The chair recognizes Senator Jabor. Thank you, Madam President, members of the Senate. I, too, rise to second the nomination of our good friend, Harold Metz. I, too, will concur, and I'm sure all of us are very proud to have Harold take this position. Harold, your dedication, uh, your love for this chamber, and the fact that you care about what happens here is the best reason why we want you to be our President Pro Tem. I endorse that nomination, Madam President. Thank you. At this time, is at this time will the clerk please? Is there any further nominations? Hearing none, the clerk will unlock the machine. Those voting for Senator Metz as President Pro Tem will indicate by pushing the green button. Those opposed, the red. The clerk will unlock the machine and take the tally. It is my pleasure to announce Senator Harold Metz from the City of Providence has been elected the President Pro Tem for the years of 2017. The next order of business is election of the Deputy President Pro Tem of the Senate. Are there any nominations? Senator Goodwin. 
Thank you, Madam President. Uh, it gives me a great deal of pleasure this afternoon to place into the nomination the name of my dear friend, uh, a very hardworking, dedicated senator from the cities of Central Falls, Pawtucket, and the town of Cumberland uh, to serve as our Deputy President pro tem for the years 2017 and 18. Uh, it gives me an honor once again, Madam President, to place into the name Senator Elizabeth Crowley for that position. Thank you, Senator Goodwin. Is there a second to that nomination? Senator Cody? I am pleased and honored to second the nomination, Madam President. Thank you, Senator Cody. Are there any additional nominations? Hearing none, the clerk will unlock the machine. Those voting for Senator Elizabeth A. Crowley as Deputy President Pro Tem will indicate by pressing the green button. Those opposed the red, the clerk will please lock the machine. 38 in the affirmative, 0 in the negative. It's my pleasure to announce that Senator Elizabeth A. Crowley from the City of Central Falls and Pawtucket has been elected Deputy President Pro Tem for the years of 2017 and 18. <laughs> At this time, the Chair will recognize the Secretary of State to swear in the reading clerk. Thank you, Madam. Repeat after me. I, John S. Baxter, Jr., I, John S. Baxter, Jr. Do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of Senate Reading Clerk according to the best of my abilities and that I will support the Constitution and laws of this state, and the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. Congratulations. At this time, we have several communications. Will the clerk please read? To the Honorable Senate, I, Nellie M. Gorbea, Secretary of State, hereby certify the members elected to the Senate and the General Assembly in accordance with the certificate of election filed in this office by the Board of Elections on the 14th day of December 2016, as provided by Section 22-3-13 of the General Laws of 1956. In testimony whereof, I have hereon to set my hand and fix the seal of the State of Rhode Island on this third day of January 2017. Respectfully yours, Nellie M. Gorbea, Secretary of State. Dear Madam President, the Senate Republican Caucus met on Thursday, November 10, 2016, to elect the leadership of the 2017-2018 General Assembly sessions. It is as follows. Honorable Dennis L. Algier, Senate Minority Leader. Honorable Nicholas D. Kettle, Senate Minority Whip. Honorable Ellen Elaine J. Morgan, Deputy Minority Whip. Honorable Mark W.G., Deputy Minority Leader, respectfully submitted Dennis L. Algier, Senate Minority Leader. To the Honorable the Senate, this is to inform you that the Democratic Senators elected on November 8, 2016, have organized the Democratic Caucus for the Senate's 2017-2018 term. As part of the organizational meeting held in the Senate Lounge at the State House on November 10, 2016, the 33 members of the caucus elected the Honorable Dominic J. Ruggiero of the 4th Senatorial District as the Senate Majority Leader for the 2017-2018 term. Sincerely, Michael J. McCaffrey, Senator, District 29, Democratic Caucus Secretary. Will the clerk please place those on file? At this time, are there any guests present? Rita Ruggiero. Uh, thank you, Madam President, and please allow me to be the first to congratulate you on your election as the President of the Senate. Thank you, Rita. I have some guests to introduce uh, on uh, behalf of uh, my friend and colleague uh, from Providence, uh, Senator Mary Ellen Goodwin. Uh, her family is here today. Uh, Senator Good Goodwin has her sister, Sheila Connolly, and her husband, Paul Connolly, with their son, uh, Liam. Uh, please join me in giving them a hand. <laughs> also present is uh, Senator Goodwin's uh, sister, Maureen Lerock, her husband, Jeff Lerock, and their children, Mary Grace, Jack, and Teresa.
And lastly, Madam President and members of the Senate, uh, Senator Goodwin has some uh, friends who are here that were instrumental in her victory uh, in this past election, as they always are in every election. And that's Kathy McDonough, uh, Marjorie Hurley, and her daughter Maggie, and Patrick Butler, and I believe they're up in the balcony. Thank you. Leader Algier. Thank you, Madam President. Congratulations on your election, and congratulations, uh, Senator Ruggieri, on your re-election as Majority Leader. I look forward to working with you in a very productive year. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to introduce Senator Kettle's family that are present this afternoon. Senator Kettle's father, Matthew Kettle, his mother, Michelle Kettle, his grandfather, William May, and Senator Kettle's girlfriend, Michelle Heavey. Welcome to the chamber. Senator Goodwin. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, it gives me a great deal of pleasure today to introduce the guest of our majority leader, uh, Senator Dominic Ruggiero. Joining uh, the Senator today is his son Charles and his wife Jillian, and their daughters Ava and Mia, who are right here to my right. Welcome to the Senate, to you all. Uh, also joining the Senator earlier was his daughter Amanda, his son-in-law PJ, and their daughter Natalie. Uh, welcome to all the Ruggiero family. Uh, Madam President, also joining uh, me, in addition to the guests that uh, Senator Ruggiero announced, my uh, dear childhood friends, is my, the chairman of my district committee, Kevin McHugh. Welcome to you, Kevin. And I'd also like to single out a guest of uh, Senator Casada, my constituent friend, Luisa Strada. Welcome to you all to the Senate today. Thank you. Senator Kettle. Thank you, Madam President. Introductions? Please proceed. Thank you. I have several introductions. Uh, first, I have the uh, family of uh, Senator G. We have his wife, Dana G. Their uh, children, Z, Griffin, and Hope G. I'd like to welcome them all to the Senate. <laughs> May I proceed, Madam President? Thank you. I also have uh, quite a list, so please hold your applause until the end for uh, Senator Morgan. Um, we have her husband, Edward Morgan, who is here today joining us. Uh, her father, Bernard Eaton, who I think deserves a little special recognition. He is a Korean War veteran as well as a Purple Heart recipient, and I want to thank him for his service to our country. We have uh, Frank Randolphy, President of the Hopkinton Town Council, Scott Billhurst, the Hopkinton Town Moderator. Uh, a couple of friends, Maria Christina Levine, Russell Taub up in the gallery, Gary Hall, her brother Bernard Eaton Jr., her sister-in-law Terry Eaton, and a couple of interns, Joshua Bedoya and Alan Stone. I'd like to welcome them all to the Senate. Thank you. <laughs> Senator Sosnowski. Thank you, Madam President. Introduction? Please proceed. Um, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce the guest of Senator Crowley. Uh, we have Kathleen Palmer with us today. She is the Secretary of the 16th Senatorial District Committee. Please join me in welcoming her to the chamber. Senator Chacon. Thank you, Madam President. An introduction? Please proceed. First, let me congratulate both you and Senator Ruggiero on your election to your offices. And with that, I would like to introduce the guest of our new Senator, Savini. First, let me begin with his wife. There are several, so hold it until the end, please. His <laughs> wife, Val. His uncle, Paul. His cousin, Pat. His cousin, Leslie. Ungast, another cousin, Jan Ungast, a cousin, is that Kitty? Courtney, Savini, Sharon Walker, a cousin, John Walker, a cousin, and a family friend, Peggy Taylor. Senator Thirag. 
Thank you very much, Madam President. Introduction. Please proceed. I am honored to introduce the McCaffrey family, uh, wife Deidre, son Michael, daughters Caitlin, Brenna, and Deidre. Welcome to the session. Senator G. Thank you, Madam President. Congratulations. Thank With you. your permission, I have some introductions. Please proceed, Senator. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, the mother of uh, Tom Paolino, Marie Issa, uh, his uh, father, Louis Paolino, uh, his brother, Austin Paolino, Mariah Carey Paolino, his sister, and Nicholas Ritchie, a friend, and John Riccatelli, a friend. Thank you. Senator Fogarty. Madam President, uh, joining the uh, Senate, pro tem to Senate President Pro Tem today is the First Lady, Dias Nets, his grandson up in the balcony, Darren Nets, along with his uh, granddaughter, Liliana, and Vanessa Nets, also our granddaughter, and also his cousin, Caden Pina. I want to welcome them to the Senate today. Senator Coyne. Thank you, Madam President. Um, an introduction, please? Please proceed. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the husband of my new seatmate, Daniel Corkin. Another, another introduction, please Madam proceed. President? Thank you. Um, and it also uh, gives me great pleasure to introduce the family of uh, Senator Lou De Palma, uh, Margaret De Palma, his wife, Graham Lewis Isom, his grandson, and Anthony Sparados, a good friend. Welcome to the Senate Chamber. <laughs> Senator Picard. Yes? Okay. Hello, Madam President. Hi. <laughs> Introduction. <laughs> Please proceed. Uh, I, have the family I have the pleasure of introducing the family, family members of Senator Pearson, uh, his grandfather and grandmother, John and Geraldine Collin, and his aunt, Kelly Collin. Welcome to the Senate. Senator McCaffrey. Thank you, Madam President. I have the pleasure this afternoon to do, introduce the family of Senator Thirag, his brother Mark, his sister Maria Crino, his sister Jane Belasco, and his niece Allie Fredgo. Welcome to the chamber. <laughs> if I can continue, Madam President. Please proceed. I'd also like to welcome to the chamber your dear friend and our dear friend in this chamber, Judge Hastings. Welcome, Judge. <laughs> Senator De Palma. Introduction, Madam President. Please proceed. It gives me pleasure to introduce uh, Senator Klein's family. Uh, hold your place to the end of a few here. Jerry Klein, her husband. Katie Klein, her daughter. Patrick Klein, her son. Ian Klein, her son. Bob Klein, her brother-in-law. And Judy Armoire, her mom. Welcome to the Senate. Senator Lynch Prada. Thank you, Madam President. Introduction, please. Please proceed. It's my pleasure to introduce Senator Gallo's family that are with us today, her husband Russell, her daughter Laura, and her sister Karen Yakovonis. Welcome to the Senate. <laughs> Madam President, may I proceed? Please. Uh, I would also like to uh, introduce uh, Senator Doyle's family that are with us today, his mom, Joan Doyle, and his wife, Jackie Doyle. Welcome. <laughs> Senator Crowley. Thank you, Madam President. Happy New Year to you and to all of the members of the Senate. Yeah, and may I have an introduction? Please proceed. Um, it gives me great pleasure today, two, for two reasons, to introduce guests of Senator Metz, 
because they're newly uh, residents of the state of Rhode Island, more specifically of the city of Central Falls. His pastor, Pastor Reverend Justin Lester, and his uh, friend Ms. Courtney Lester, both from Central Falls, and I'm glad to have them here uh, with us today. Senator Metz. May, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You have more, Senator Carly? Yeah, may I proceed? Of course. I'm sorry. I also have the... <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> um, I'm also uh, honored to be able to introduce uh, my seatmates, uh, Senator Sosnowski's husband, Michael Sosnowski, is with us today. Welcome to the chamber. And just a few more seconds of your time. Uh, it gives me great pleasure. He just left, but the newly elected councilman from Central Falls, Mr. Franklin Solano, he was here. And also Mayor James Dioso was inaugurated last night. He was here. And my great friend from the Rhode Island Housing up in the loft, Amy Renown. Thank you, Mayor and President. Thank you, Senator Crowley. Senator Metz. Yes, thank you, Manny President. Congratulations. Thank you, and thank you all to you and through your permission to introduce guests. Please proceed. Yes, it's an honor for me uh, to introduce the son of Senator Fogarty, uh, Brandon Fogarty. So give him a big hand. Senator Satchel. Thank you, Madam President. An introduction. Please proceed. Uh, I, I, it is my pleasure to introduce the better half of my seatmate, Senator Ashenbol, his wife, Gigi Ashenbol. <laughs> Senator Gallo. Thank you, Madam President. To him, through you, an introduction. Please proceed. It's my pleasure today to introduce Senator Lynch Prada's family. Uh, first of all, her husband, Joe Prada, is here. Uh, Pat Lynch, her mom. Karen Lynch Bernard, her sister. Bethany Furtado, Kristen Lynch, Jennifer Buckley. Um, those are all her sisters. And then her niece, Carly Buckley, and Raymond Pendergast, her nephew. Welcome. Senator Jabour. Thank you, Madam President, members of the Senate. Permission to introduce guests. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam President. It's an honor and a pleasure to welcome back to the Senate uh, the wife of Senator Frank Lombardi, and that's Antonelia Lombardi. Nice to have you here, Antonelia. Senator Conley. Madam President, introduction please. Please proceed. I would simply like to begin by expressing my gratitude to you for the new and innovative technology so that you can actually see me when I am standing and addressing the Senate. Thank you very much. I must admit, Senator, that thought went through my mind today. <laughs> More importantly, Madam President, to you and through you and to the members of the Senate, it is my pleasure to introduce the wife of my seat neighbor, now going on for uh, my third term, Patty Lombardo. And Senator Lombardo. Thank you, Madam President. Introduction, please. Please proceed. It's a pleasure to introduce my colleague and my friend's wife, Senator Connolly's wife, Norma Connolly. Welcome. <laughs> Senator Nesselbush. Thank you, Madam President. An introduction. Please proceed. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, it is my honor to introduce the guests of our newly elected Senator Anna Casada, and with her today, uh, her husband, Lazaro Casada, her daughter, Leslie Polanco, uh, her other daughter, Kaomi Polanco, her son, Emmanuel Casada, her mother, Rosa Perez, her grandson, Jaden Ovalis, her friend Luis Estrada, and another friend, a uh, uh, Councilman Wilman Jenning. Will Burr Jenning. Welcome to the Senate. Senator Jabour. 
Senator Cody. Thank you, Madam President. It's a pleasure to introduce to you and through you to the members of the Senate, the family of Senator Sheehan. With us here today are his wife, Meredith, his stepson, Colin, son, Liam, and daughter, Abigail, and his mother-in-law, Melissa Jones. Welcome to the Senate. Senator Pearson. Thank you, Madam President. Introduction. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, to you and through you, it is my pleasure today to introduce the family uh, of Senator DuPont, uh, his wife, Marcia, his children, Antonio and Sophia, his parents, Manuel and Adrian. Welcome to the chamber. Please proceed. Thank you, Madam President. I'd also like to take this opportunity to introduce Caitlin Picard, as daughter of Senator Picard, to the chamber as well. Welcome, Caitlin. Senator Takis. Thank you, Madam President. Introduction, please. Please proceed. And also, I want to congratulate you to be elected as Senate President for the fifth time. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, and to my colleagues in the Senate, to my left, I want to introduce a longtime family friend, uh, Frank Forbert. Welcome to the Senate, Frank. And also, and also up in the gallery, a good friend of mine, a constituent of mine from Coventry, Greg Mosey. Welcome to the Senate. And Madam President, I want to thank you again for the technology, because now I can see the backside of Senator Connolly. <laughs> Are there any further introductions? Are there any further guests present? If there are none, the next order of business is to reinstate rules 3 .5, 4 .5, 4 .10 1, 4.5, 4.10 1, 4.10 2, 5.6, 6.1, 6.2, 6.4, 3, 6.5, 7.6, and the adoption of interim rules. I will entertain a motion to reinstate the previously suspended rules and the adoption of the interim rules of the Senate just until the Senate Rules Committee makes a formal report. Leader Ruggiero, kindly make a motion. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I move to reinstate the following rules. 3.5, 4.5, 4.10-1, 4.10-2, 5 5.6, 6.1, 6.2, 6.4, 6 6.5, and adopt the 2015-2016 rules of the Senate. Leader Ruggiero makes a motion, seconded by Leader Algier. Is there any discussion? Are there any questions? There being none, will the clerk unlock the machine and take the tally? All those in favor of adopting in the previous year's rules as interim rules, kindly indicate by hitting the green button. Will the clerk please lock the machine? 38 in the affirmative, 0 in the negative, and the interim rules are adopted. At this time, are there any announcements? I will make one. Uh, there's a reception that is immediately following in the Senate lounge today, to which you're all invited on behalf of myself, Leader Ruggiero, and Leader Algier. Second, I want to uh, call uh, to your attention that there is session tomorrow at 4 o'clock p.m. And at this time, I would like to invite back the ensemble from Newport, Rhode Island, Division I, Ancient Order of Hibernians Men's Singing Group, to perform a final musical selection. Oh, there they are. <laughs>
this time I'd ask you to remain standing. It's my sincere honor to introduce Rabbi Sarah Mack of the Temple Beth El in Providence for the purposes of delivering the benediction. Rabbi? <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> oh, guardian of life and liberty, grant our leaders wisdom and forbearance that they may govern with justice and compassion. May we all remember that the truly strong are those who raise up the fallen, and the truly wise are those who acknowledge the vital work of each and every person who makes our state strong. Teach us your ways, so that we learn not to give weight to that which divides us, instead finding inspiration in our shared experience. O source of peace, let discrimination not diminish our vision nor equality extinguish the hope upon which our great state is founded. May our senators lead us in paths of peace, build a communal cohesion through word and deed, and bring safety and prosperity to all Rhode Islanders, so that the words of the prophet shall be fulfilled, light shall shine in the darkness. We say together in faith, Amen. Amen. I would now recognize Senator Picard for purposes of adjournment. Madam President, if there's no further business, I move that we adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. The Senate is adjourned. Aye.